Hello and welcome to this After Effects Basics tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to look at compositions. Compositions are the boxes in which all your work takes place. You create a composition and then these assets that we have imported into our project are dropped into the composition and you work on them in the composition. So we need to know how to create compositions and there are a number of ways of creating compositions. It all depends on what you want to do. Sometimes you have got a particular size of composition that you know that you need to create. Somebody's told you it's got to be a certain size and you can create it to that particular size. But sometimes somebody turns around and says, I want you to make a composition that's exactly the same size as the footage I've given you and they haven't told you what size the footage is. How do you do that? Well, let's look at the different options. Firstly, how do we do it by the numbers? You can go up to the menu at the top and you can choose composition or you can see there's a keyboard shortcut, control N, click on that, new composition, and it opens up a dialog box. Now, it's important with everything in After Effects to name it properly. If you create a project now and you haven't named your assets and you don't name your compositions and you just end up with composition 1, 2, 3, 4 or layer 1, 2, 3, 4 and you go away from it and you come back a few weeks later and you look at it and you think I've got no idea what any of this is. So what you actually need to do is name your compositions. So I'm just going to call this starter. And then we have things called presets. Now these presets are commonly used sizes and frame rates and pixel aspect ratios for footage. So let's have a very quick look at them. I'm going to drop them down and you see immediately we've got something that says NTSC and PAL. This is to do with standards in North America and Japan and standards in Europe and most of the rest of the world. So NTSC is a North American standard. It stands for National Television Standards Council. And PAL is a European standard and used quite a lot in the rest of the world, standing for phase alternating line. There are quite a few differences, one of the main ones being frame rate. Frame rate are, if you like, the number of still images that are played in one second to give the illusion of movement. Now for NTSC, generally speaking, the frame rate is 29, you'll see just here, 29.97 frames per second. So every second there are effectively 29.97 still frames playing through, nearly 30. Whereas PAL, phase alternating line, has 25 frames per second. Also, you'll see that you've got something that says widescreen and widescreen square pixels. What's the difference between those? Well, standard televisions do not have square pixels. But if you're going to output to a standard definition television, not a high definition television, but a standard definition television, then you would choose the appropriate American or European standard NTSC or PAL without the square pixels. However, if you're outputting for the internet, so it's going to be watched on a computer screen, or it's going to be watched on an HD TV, the pixels on those screens are square, so you would generally speaking choose square pixels. And then you've got a whole series of different ones below here. You've got HDV footage, which is a particular type of footage, and then you actually have setups for HD TV, and you've got three different frame rates, so it's 24 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and 29.97. So the US would choose HDTV 1080 29.97, whereas the UK and Europe would probably choose HDTV 1080, which is the height, 25 frames per second. And you'll see that you've got presets that even go up for those who know for things like the RED film camera, which is a 4K size frame, which is absolutely huge. So you've got all sorts of different sizes. So we're just going to work with this one here, which is PAL widescreen square pixels. You can choose any particular one you like for this example. Click on that, and it sets all the figures for us. So it gives us a height, a width. It tells us what the pixels are going to be and a frame rate. You can manually change these if you have got something that's a bit more esoteric. So you can change them if necessary. And the other thing down here is what about the duration? How long is it going to go on for? At the moment, this says it's going to last for five seconds. But you can change this length just by highlighting it and typing in a new value. Now if I wanted it to be 10 seconds long, I'd do 10 and then I'd hit the point key, the period key, the full stop key, whatever you want. And if I just click to one side, you'll see that that now says 10 seconds long. 
But if I accidentally just did 10 and I didn't hit the point key or the period key, it would just be 10 frames long, which is very short. And if I want it to be 10 minutes, I go 10 and then I go point, point. If I click away, you'll see that's now 10 minutes long, zero seconds, zero frames. And you can't do 10 hours. The maximum you can have, I think, is three hours. Let me just try three point, point, point. And you'll see that, yep, there you go, you've got three hours. And I don't think you can go any longer than that. And this down here just says what's the background color. At the moment, it's set to black. But if ever you need to change the background color of your composition, you can do it just here by clicking the swatch and choosing a different color. We're going to stick with black. OK, so now that's all done, all I would do is click OK, and that composition would be created. But I want to show you some other things. So I'm actually going to click Cancel. Because if you start off with After Effects with nothing created, no compositions made, and you want to create something that's exactly the same size and frame rate as the footage that you have, you could, if you wanted, quickly take your footage and just drop and drag it down here in the timeline area and let go. And what it's done is it's created footage that's exactly the same size and length and frame rate as the original. So that's a quick start if nothing is selected. But that is very rare that that happens. Usually you've got something created and you want to add footage to it. So we're going to create another composition, but this time we're not going to use the composition menu up here. We're going to use this icon down here, which is create a new composition. If you click on that icon, you're going to get the same setup that we had before. So let's create one and call this one Starter. Starter, and click OK. And that's now our widescreen. And notice in here, you've got a different icon for a composition than you have for footage items. OK, and down here, we've got a new tab that says Starter. That's the one that we drag down. And this is Starter. Now, if I was to drag that boat footage, don't drag the composition, do drag the footage. If I was to drag that down into the Starter composition, look there's a problem it doesn't fit the composition is much smaller than the footage so what I would have to do is shrink it down to make it fit there's a number of ways of doing that I could just click the handle and pull it into place but that's not very precise or alternatively there's a keyboard shortcut which is Control alt F on a PC command option F on a Mac or if you want a menu for that you just go to layer transform fit to comp as you can see control alt f or command option f on a mac and that then fits it in but that shrunk it down actually i'm going to control z that's wrong i don't really want to fit i want to have my composition being exactly the same size as the footage but um i don't have anything blank here so if i drag and drop it it's not creating it the right size what do i do well this is the standard way of creating it you don't drag and drop it down here because that's where your composition is you click and drag and drop it on this icon, the new composition icon. And when you let go of the new composition icon, let me choose another piece of footage, actually, let's choose the grotty flag. Drag that and drop it on the new comp icon and let go. It creates a new composition exactly the same length as the footage, with the same name as the footage, the same pixel aspect ratio and frame rate. And as you can see here, grotty flags is 1 minute 14 seconds and 5 frames long. It's the same for the composition as it is for the footage. So that's how you can create a composition that you can work on very quickly. Now, you can then add other items in. Now, I've got this arrow up here, and I can click and drag, and I can drop the arrow above the footage, and then drag my current time indicator, or playhead through, and you can see that I've composited something. I've taken two elements, I've put one on top of the other, that, by definition, is a composition. I have made two things that previously didn't belong to each other actually work together. And that's how you can bring in lots of layers and work on them in a composition. This is just an introductory tutorial to show you how to create compositions, how to create compositions that are the same size as your footage, and then we're beginning to look at how you can bring items in. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Thank you.